most of the CW stuff is coming back, so before it does, let's talk about it. <music> Greetings, Comic Universe. I'm Brian, and I am back for something new. A new series that will be from multiple creators. Honestly, mainly me and Jay, but the other guys can pop in if they want to. And what we will be talking about is um, the shows that are coming back for the CW right now are like full force and at least Jay and I talk about them individually on our channels, him more than me. And so before we get into this new onslaught of stuff with this new revamped comic universe, we want to do a series where we talk about the shows so that you are caught up to date before we jump into the new season. So, mostly I will be focusing on last season, but let's dive into it. Spoiler alert, if you guys haven't caught up to Supergirl yet, uh, go do it and then come back and tell us what you think in the comments down below. So, season one was back when it was on CW, the CBS channel, and they were still getting their wings, but it was still a really good season arguably their best and the overall theme of the season was like beginnings and origins then and and astro was the villain and it, she was arguably their best villain up until last season then you had season two which was honestly all about manel the villain was his mom Played by the lovely Terry Hatcher. And it's just the, th the theme of the season was Monel and love. Also, origins of other heroes, but that was kind of a little bit on the back burner. But anyway, if I go into every season, I'll be here all day. Uh, so. Season 3. Season 3 definitely felt the Arrowverse Season 3 curse. It had the whole Sam Rain, Rain thing. It really brought Lena into the forefront, which was awesome. But it also brought in Rain and the Priestesses. And that story really wasn't that great. I liked Sam. I liked Ruby. I just didn't like Rain. She ended up being a puppet to small characters. That was not cool. And then when she was let loose, she was more of a rage machine than the Hulk. Anyway. Then you get to season four. Oh yeah, season three also... I believe brought in Brainy. Yeah. Season 3 brought in Brainy because Monel returned as an actual good character and when he did he brought Brainy with him and he ended up having to take Win, which all and go I loved Win and he left Brainy behind to be the new man in the van. And uh, Brainy really got to shine this season. Uh, we got to, as part of the overall story, we got to see his default mode, which is not exactly evil, but kind of, I guess you could say, lawful neutral.
he was methodical and would risk people's lives and was not good and makes me hint that they're going to be doing something with OG Brainiac, especially with the fact that Krypton's no longer on there. R.I.P. So that was interesting to see, but the main thing with Brainy was Nia. Nia Null. The first ever live action transgender superhero. And she was freaking awesome. I loved her. She was a nice addi addition to the show. It was cool to see her grow as a hero and also be kind of Kara's unofficial sidekick and see Kara mentor her like Kat meant toward Kara. And it was awesome. And Nia is a great character that I cannot wait to see where they go with her. And her romance with Brainy was great. And it'll be nice to see where they go with her from here. The stuff with her mom was really good but sad. Then, last season, you had, um, in case you can't tell, I'm going by characters now, because a lot of the characters had developing stuff last season, like, um, Alex, oh, Alex. Alex, last season they brought in the whole idea of Alex has become Kara's rock. So what would you do if you had to separate them? So, they did that, and I don't know if it was the best of stories, and it was really heartbreaking to see Kara missing her sister, and then that scene where she finally did remember was gut-wrenching, holy shit. Can't cuss in this channel or monetize, but oh boy. Uh, and... To see her finally realize was really awesome, but also the fact that she was separated, got, we got to see more of her, like, outside of Supergirl, which made her bond with new character Kelly Olsen, which Kelly was awesome with the little bit that we saw. I can't wait to see where we go with her now that she's a cast member, and honestly, I hate to say this, but I'm more excited for her as a cast member than... Her brother, which, no offense to Makai Brooks, I think he's a good actor. And for this version of James Olsen, I think he did a good job. Uh, last season was like the apex of his character where we got to see him versus Ben Lockhart, which I didn't really like Ben Lockhart, but I liked him and James going head to head. That was really cool. And it's a nice way to cap off James' story because he is leaving this season. And it was clear, though, that they really didn't know what to do with James, so I can see why Makai wants to leave. Especially now that they've ended that stuff with Lockhart. Lockwood, sorry. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, then, Space Dad. He had one of the best, he had another good story last season with him still getting over his father's death and then having to deal with Manchester Black, which Manchester Black was honestly top three villains with Ann Astra and someone else we will mention soon. Um, but I really liked how they were like, neither side is correct. They're good and evil in both sides. Just like they're not all, depending on how you lean, you can't think that all Democrats are evil or all Republicans are evil. I won't go into politics now, but just that there is no black and white was a very interesting concept, especially tethered with Jean trying to learn how to control his anger. And the ending to his story was really cool, and I can't wait to see where we go with him going further. Uh, then you had um, Lena. And Lena's story was really interesting because 
her story involved Kara and the the two drawn out of her not knowing Kara's Supergirl, but then pairing that with her brother, Lex, who, oh boy, in case you didn't know, he's the third of the top three villains of Supergirl, in my opinion. Uh, and he's awesome. And to find out that he was the secret mastermind behind a lot of things, it's really cool to find out. And seeing Lena's interactions with him and the fact that she finally got to the end where she was like, you know what? War would be better without you. Bam. Kill him. And then he's like, ha ha ha. As my final thing, I will show you. Boom. Kara is Supergirl. So that is going to be heart-wrenching to see going forward. Especially because I am admittedly a Supercorp fan. I know it's never going to happen. But still, it's going to be heart-wrenching to see it happen. Uh... Oh yeah, also Lex created a character named Red Daughter, who was also played by Melissa Benoist. And she was a really cool character. I wish we would have got to see more of her, especially more of her being good. It was really cool. Her, her ending of her story was really sad, and I hate to see her go, and I wish we could have gotten to see more of good her. I think I've got everyone except for Kara herself, which last season was more focused on her learning to be more reporter-y and see the power of the press. Last season was really cool. And I like how they handled Kara's story. Oh yeah, last thing is Miss Tess Mucker! Which, by the way, I love that reveal of her being evil from, like, the beginning. And then also the double reveal in the finale where it's not Lex who's pulling her strings and they're pulling her strings against her will so there's hope for redemption. I'm really excited for the future. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you again in the universe. Till next time and beyond. Oh, and that's what you missed. Supergirl.